Headed. Don't want to turn that puck over at the blue line and give a possible odd man situation going back the other way. To the point now, Seppala, Larson out in front, kicked wide by Billy Petman. It's tied up by Rodrigue. We got a stoppage of play. Little disturbance at the side of the goal. Nothing will come from this. Just about seven minutes gone. A goalless start at Climate Pledge Arena. If you're always asking, where next? Capital One has the travel card for you. Venture X. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Venture X. What's in your wallet? A great story has magic, power, and every once in a while, it has miracles. As luck would have it, that's our story. like this atmosphere on Sunday Night Baseball. Raise those hands. Let everybody know you want deep. This is the time of year when things get real. Sunday Night Baseball, Sundays at 7 on ESPN. This year, we're teaming up to bring you Monday Night Football. Eli, do they make Joe and Troy stand the entire time? Hey, what are you guys doing here? We're back for 10 more Monday nights. Yeah, well, we've got over 20 years of legendary calls together. We've got a secret handshake. Look, either way, you can't lose. Well, unless you have to wear suits to work. Or you have to leave your basement. <laughs> nice. Very nice. I want to talk about that entry on the power play, right? When you have people across like this, instead of stick handling, you just want to get that puck in deep. And then go to work, right? Riker Evans trying to make a play, the quick little stick by the D-man, and now Edmonton's back the other way. Again, recognition, JT, you are an outstanding penalty killer in your day. The understanding, instead of trying to beat a guy or two, you have the man advantage. Sometimes less is more, chip it in, go get it, and then go to work. Especially when they're skating through the middle like that, you know the penalty kill is going to squeeze themselves together. It's going to be a hard way to skate through with that many bodies. Out to center now. Back in even terms, it's cleared in. Adam Larson goes to the corner with Reed Schaefer. 32nd overall pick in the past draft for Ken Holland and the Edmonton Oilers out to center. Schaefer pulls up at the line. Larson was there for the crack and they jam for it. Schaefer will glide it ahead. Riker Evans takes a little bump from Greg McKay. Nice play by Tan of there. Big time play. Larson over the line, looking for Jesper Froden. A couple of sweets there. Froden played last season in the Boston organization. Out to center, it's Tyler Yamamoto. He'll dangle in on a crisscross. Good defense that time by Justin Schultz. He'll hack it along the boards, and getting to it is Froden. Pin there for a moment by Tyler Benson, and the Kraken now will reorganize. Just about eight minutes gone on a scoreless first from Seattle. Preseason game number one. Edmonton played yesterday. A 4-0 win at home over Winnipeg. Comes out to center ice. Tyson Berry now will take it back. The veteran. Here's Benson. Sealed off a bit by Schultz. He gets by him. Then he's greeted there by Michael Ketney. Back to the point. Broberg throws it across for Berry. A wrist shot blocked in front. Kempney, a good job there. Now it's centered across, all the way back to the point man, Broberg. He'll send it deeper for Yamamoto, who gets there, shouldered by Donskoy. Here's Tyson Berry dancing at the line. He'll clear it in. Good job by the Kraken, keeping everything to the outside, really not allowing the Oilers to get inside the dots. It's the most dangerous area. Think about it. If you're going to score a goal, well, the puck's got to get inside the faceoff dots. Derek Ryan, Devin Shore, 14 in the white, knocked down. He's off the skate of Ryan. Accepted by Seattle's Justin Schultz. He'll send it back. You guys played a little together in Washington. They did. And Schultz a little bit. Some yeah. familiarity. Out to center ice. Matthias Janmark. A veteran with Dallas. Chicago. Vegas. Move it across. Devin Shore. He'll dust it off. It goes off a stick off Kentney. And it goes out of play. I had a chance to talk to Dave Hackstall this morning for a couple minutes, and uh, it was interesting. The first two days of training camp, and then he gave his 
players the third day off, which was Saturday, and then he came back yesterday with a practice, and the tempo went through the roof, and he kind of just felt with his experience, not only in college, but also at the NHL level as a head coach, an assistant coach, he just kind of thought that third day is where sometimes there's a little bit of strain, and kind of guys just get a little bit tired and what have you, so just kind of was cautious. I thought the level yesterday was through the roof. As far as the intensity and the pace, everybody's talking about pace. Everybody loves their pace right. come exhibition and preseason, yeah. but it's, uh, it really was a quicker pace after the first two days of camp. And we've heard all 32 coaches say that around the NHL about the pace. But what about broadcasters? <laughs> what do you think about our there pace is, there? There is no pace for us. <laughs> now it's cleared in all the way around. And it comes out through center. Oh, you were talking about the top of the show. You were getting in this morning and seeing the sunrise. I don't know where you were last night. No, no, I said when oh, I awakened. Oh, oh. <laughs> when I awakened. I don't know, JT. He might have been hey, just listen. getting in last night. Send out a search party. Now, <laughs> Rafferty will send it back. JT, this is unfair up here. <laughs> I don't want to break your little party up right now. No, you it sounds right great. In. I'm listening. No, no. I'm laughing. <laughs> no, you feel free. Anytime you can be the third man in and stay in the game. Now it's played along the boards. Back it goes. Heavy shot by Peters. They score. No goal, Johnny. No goal. Waved off right away. So the goaltender Wait. interference it looked like. As no Martin Phillip. Jones was crowded. Phillip played in Seattle. He played right here in Seattle, did he not? He did. Call on the ice is call on the ice is no goal. Number 47 from Edmonton makes incidental contact prior to the puck crossing the line. So 47 is Noah Philp. Jay Woodcroft wants an explanation. We'll see it here. Wants the left part of your screen. Jones is in the blue paint. Here comes Phillip right there off of him. And then there, there's the contact. But this puck ends up in behind the contact right there. Now that puck was in behind him. And then the contact. The contact came clearly, from my vantage point, the contact came clearly before the puck entered the back of the net. Right. But I think he was allowed to play his position prior. Yes, there's you no question. You know what I mean? I, I'm with you. JT, from your angle, what did you see? These ones are always tough. I mean, they're, do they want a challenge, right, JT? I mean, they're, it's preseason, probably yeah. not going to yeah. just let it go. Yeah. I think they might have a case. It just depends what the ref says. Right. They're going like to pay, no pay challenge. some bills, right? Yeah, yeah okay. no dice. All right. We'll stick around. I'm bringing back my spicy chicken strips. And while if you're always asking, where next? Capital One has the travel card for you. Venture X. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Venture X. What's in your wallet? Football may not always be perfect, but Bundesliga is football as it's meant to be. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football because you have to be ready for an NFC Championship rematch. Whether you're trying to run it back no time to keep the or run them down. It's going to be a fight. Don't be drifting on this field. Stafford, Cup, and the Rams meet Jimmy G, Bosa, and the Niners. Skate. Check out Kraken Community Iceplex, the team's official practice facility, public skating, stick and puck, drop-in hockey, and more. All ages, all skill levels are welcome. For more information, visit KrakenCommunityIceplex.com. Well, let's take an overhead look at that opportunity as Phil gets to the front of the net and makes that contact right there. But again, it looked like it clearly went off his knee, so that's one of those situations a lot of times I think what coaches look at now in the video crews, in that situation of, of challenging or not, is what was the call on the ice. And that might have been one of those ones too close and that yeah, is preseason. But it's the difference between maybe home ice and right. 
missed in the playoffs. That's right. It, you know, over the course of uh, an 82 regular season but it, schedule. Is it fair to say both of you agree that regular season that's challenged? Here's a chance possibly out in front. Denied I, by Phil. That, that overhead told me that that would be one of those where I would just just go with this, you know, the call on the ice. Mm -hmm. Now, it's early in the game, too. Now, it right. for me, it, which it depends on where it was in the score, in the situation of the game, of going ahead and challenge, saying, look, we got nothing to lose if we try to, you know, to uh, knock it down. Scoreless hockey, good stop by Jones. A centering pass intended for Esposito doesn't work. That was Tyson Berry made a really nice play at jumping in. One of the more active D-men for the Edmonton Oilers. He had 41 points in 73 games last season. Has always been a very good offensive-minded defenseman. Evans now, and they have some pretty good forwards to get the puck yeah. to. Yeah, and they did take a hit on the back end with Duncan Keith, the future Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. uh, retiring, he is a part of the organization. And uh, figuring, trying to figure out what part of, uh, you know, moving into management that he would like to take. He, obviously a world-class defenseman, and... Uh, the Oilers have him to help out a lot of their good young defensemen that they have in the pipe. Tyson Berry, Yamamoto shot off the stick of Schultz good. off the glass. Good D there. But the netting got in the way too, so we get a stoppage. JT, uh, how much conversation's going on down there? Well, not much between yeah, teams. I okay. think uh, everybody's keeping it civil down here. I've had a couple <laughs> different conversations, along with the linesmen, yeah. Barry as well, and warm-ups, which is, it's always nice you get to see some guys that you, you yeah. played against, and, and now I guess they probably like me a little bit more now that I'm in here. <laughs> and we're seeing Justin Schultz, who, who started his career with Edmonton. Yeah. Much ballyhooed free agent out of the NCAA. Plays whistle dead on a hand pass with 7.55 left in period one. So I got to take that, JT, as you used to uh, kind of chase Barry around every once in a while. Is that uh, is that fair when you were playing? Yeah, if it's one of their uh, their skill guys, I was definitely trying to put him through the glass a little bit. But uh, I feel like I walked that line just perfectly, though. Not too far over, just stay right with it. It's amazing how you guys have total recall. <laughs> Of the majority of your careers. Selected, Johnny. In your case, yes. Now it's cleared all the way around. That's more each. It's more of a else. stretch. Yes. <laughs> Out of the circle to the slot. Broken up. And the crack and take nice over. play by Wenberg there. He retrieved it beautifully. Now shoot down score. Edsel says shoot. He tried to drag it. And it comes back. We're going to have to get you an, an earpiece. Get some of these guys yeah. an earpiece and get it connected downstairs. I think Coach Carroll could probably help me out with that, right? They got the pipeline to the quarterbacks, yeah. right? It's true. Like, there's a perfect situation there, JT. You saw the play develop. Weinberg made two great plays there. The light is so green there. Donskoy's got one thing on his mind there. You got to fire the puck. Right? So, sorry, I was trying not no, to get that's hit okay. there. All right, we got gotcha. you. Agree, when those opportunities yeah. do come, you have to take that advantage of that. Right now, you're looking at two shots on goal per team. You can't give up opportunities like that. Eric Ryan taken down, and a penalty will be called here with 6.52 left in the first period. Michael Kempney will come all the way across and take the Kraken's first penalty of preseason. Seattle penalty number 36. Two minutes, tripping. Michael Kempney goes to turn, he toe picks, loses his balance, tries to get the puck, and then gets Derek Ryan in it. There's a the play by Wenberg. Watch this beautiful little pass right here. Defenseman comes over, and now all of a sudden, right there, just let it go. Just let it go. Fire, shoot for the far pad. Look for a rebound opportunity. And for a guy that really struggled offensively, to put it mildly, you get those opportunities, you got to shoot the puck. He had two goals in 75 games. He scored 17 with Colorado the season before. That one tipped wide by Yamamoto in the slot. He'll stretch it out. Kyler Yamamoto, midpoint for Barry. His pass detected. Well read by Adam Larson. He'll get it out. Adam Larson had an outstanding season for the Kraken JT in year one. He did. He was one of those mo the most reliable defensemen. Anybody who played with him, they played even better. He just brought the best out of everybody. Brandon Tanev now will sail it out. He's a, he's a large human. I mean, he takes up so much space and understanding positionally, knowing when to be aggressive, knowing when to sit home and, 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 and have that mentality of, you know, 
live to fight another day. Oilers now reset this power play, comes out to center. Many of the regulars not dressed tonight. They were third best in the NHL with a high octane power play a season ago. Jake Vertanen will carry in. Seppala. Petro Seppala tries to clear it out. The Oilers trap the zone. It's carried in by Broberg. Good to see him back there after taking that uh, puck to the hand. Philip Broberg, the player you speak about, and now it's set up. Esposito drops it back. Broberg at the point. The played on the outskirts. 5.20 left period one. No score. Broberg once again. Cross ice. Carried in. Barry sends it back for Broberg. His shot tipped wide. Maybe Wenberg with the block. It was Seth Griffith who made that pass. And now Wenberg who made the block sets up Don Skoy. Who clears it out with 13 seconds left on the crack and kill. Actually broke the stick of Alex Wenberg there. Once he realized he had a wardrobe malfunction there. He just dropped it and got to the bench. Through center ice. Himalainen scored a goal yesterday early, clears it in. Maddie Veneers takes over the penalty kill. Kempney out of the box on a down and out. Rodrigue to the boards. As he cleared it along, Veneers carries in. He's thwarted on the back check by McKegg. Himalainen spins off Oliver Bjorkstrand. He'll take it back for Edmonton Bjorkstrand with a steal. Himalainen goes across again for Barry, who angles out to center. Picked off, nice read by Riker Evans. He'll send it in. Just about 16 minutes gone in period one. John Forslund, Eddie Olchek, JT Brown between the benches here on Root Sports and a cast of thousands with us tonight. Veneers, Burkowski, and Bjorkstrand out here together. Bjorkstrand along the boards, tied up by Derek Ryan. Dug out Yanmark across. Warner with a shot off the goal post. Max Warner and out in front, another chance. Jones oh, says no on Derek Ryan. Martin Jones recovers nicely. 3.53 left to go in period one. He keeps it scoreless in Seattle. This holiday, treat the whole family to Hannah Anderson's best pajamas ever. Unbelievably soft organic cotton pajamas your whole family will want to wear all season long. <laughs> Dozens of one-of-a-kind iconic prints, guaranteed to find one you and your family will love. Turn everyday moments into holiday memories with the original family pajamas. Hannah Anderson, best pajamas ever. Shop now at hannahanderson.com. I just made this and it is incredible. I used every plate and this cost me about the same as a cup of coffee. I'm gonna show you how. So every plate's actually 25% cheaper than grocery shopping, which is awesome, because that means I can save money on food even as food prices go up. And then I love the fact I don't have to worry about overbuying, wasting food, none of that. This is way better than takeout. I knew you had so much more bang for your buck. You seriously, you gotta try it. Mm -hmm. Get your first box for just $1.49 a meal using offer code 149TV. Let everybody know you went deep. This is the time of year when things get real. Sunday Night Baseball, Sundays at 7 on ESPN. He did just that last year. Stanley Cup Final Heroics. A career season in just about every category. He's a two-time Cup winner, and he is a Seattle Kraken. He has some huge shot blocks in that uh, playoff run for the Colorado Avalanche. And do not underestimate, again, the championship pedigree. We heard Allison and... Nikki talking about that in the pregame of when you look at the body of work of my general manager Ronnie Francis certainly a big part of bringing in guys and giving them opportunity and Burakovsky played extremely well with the opportunity presented. Play is offside. We get a stoppage here. Opening night for the Seattle Kraken regular season is less than a month away. Check with your provider to make sure you can catch all the action on the ice all season long right here 
on Root Sports. Power play coming for the Kraken. James Hamblin in the box for Edmonton. His second penalty. There's the Kraken can establish some shooting mentality here on the power play. Straight away clear by Edmonton right off the draw. Because when you have that mindset, and when the lane is there, then the penalty killing team has to respect that. And then all those other passing lanes will open up in a good entry there. Schultz now up top. Skate to stick. Wenberg, he'll draw in. Schultz again. His shot nullified. Good block by Shore. Veneers takes over. Deals it low. Wenberg moves it. Top of your screen, Burakovsky. Here's Bjorkstrand supporting him. Wenberg kicks it out. Bjorkstrand. Midpoint. Schultz again. Veneers. One-timer. Great stop by Rodrigue. And now comes back to the point. Zone kept by Schultz. All the way around. Burakovsky sends it along the kick plate where it's played there and retrieved by Wenberg, but he's broken up, and the Oilers get it out. Good puck possession. Bjorkstrand supporting him. And then the quick Wenberg play from Schultz to Veneers. Rodriguez with these again. really nice Veneers. right One -timer. pass save. Great stop by Rodriguez. And the best chance back came to from that zone kick right by Schultz. All the Ryan way around, 16 goals. Sends it one. Rafferty over the line. Yamamoto got in the way. Kyler has the puck. Here he comes. Former first-round pick. Through the slot, Nimalainen with a shot denied by Jones, and Kiki has the loose change. Here come the Kraken, three on one, Kiki delays out in front, just by Jesper Froden. Might have got hooked there right when that puck was coming. Rafferty down low, up top, here's Kiki. A year ago on this date, first ever game played by the Kraken in Spokane. Morgan Kiki had a couple, including the game winner, Al Donato. Rafferty sealed off by Yamamoto. Nice play there. Took a hit to make a play. Rogan Rafferty takes it in. To the slot. Froden. Indirect back it goes for Geeky. He'll tee it up. Blocked in front. Hamlin's out of the box. Evans shot denied by Rodrigue. Rafferty. Cruising the line is Petman. Got some tired guys out there right now for Edmonton. Rafferty. A wrist shot through traffic wide. Olivier Rodrigue was scrambling for that one in goal out of the corner. Hamblin sends it back. Kesselring gets it out to center. He's the young man that hit the goal post moments ago. Evans over the line now. Carries in, draws a couple of defenders. Riker Evans out of the corner now. Petman, Julie Petman, 89 in the Kraken blue. The deep sea blue, they call it now. Tanev, Larson at the line. This way, Evans, a one-timer wide off the boards by Tanev. Under a minute left in period one. Donskoy given a shove. He'll play the puck well away from Niemalainen. Take it all the way back up top. Jonas Donskoy winds it up, deals it in. Reset by Kentney. Donskoy, here's Larson. His shot, no tip available. And Peters gets to it for Edmonton and dumps it out to neutral ice. And a penalty for interference is called down low. Might have been as the goaltender Rodriguez got knocked down and looks like Brandon Tanner. Yeah, that's the call. Number 13, two minutes for the Really good sustained, best sustained pressure of the period for the Kraken. Much in front of the net. Right there, you see the left skate. That palm goes up and then on that power play, the pass from Schultz. The Veneers and then a right pad save by the goaltender. Veneers has had two good looks on that power play. You have to think that that shooting mentality is going to open up a nice play if they yep. get another look. A yeah, great point. Rodrigue now will leave it there and on the power play, Groberg out to center. Brandon Tanev, two minutes for goaltender interference. Schaefer, Reed Schaefer. Esposito back to the point, fumbled by Broberg. A dozen seconds left in the period. Five shots for Seattle. Six taken by Edmonton. This is Jake Furtanen. He'll clear it in. Kempney on his horse. Moves it. Griffith out in front off Larson. It moves around the slot. And that'll do it here in period number one. So, Maddie Beneers had a couple of chances, including a splendid one on the most recent power play. Denied by the young goaltender, Olivier Rodrigue who was very good for the Edmonton Oilers. Preseason game number one. Goal is hockey after one at Climate Pledge Arena.
The first 20 minutes of Kraken pre-season hockey to get the blood coursing through the veins once again in front of an enthusiastic kind of pledge arena crowd. Six shots for the Oilers, five for the Kraken, no goals after one. Welcome back inside Final Pledge Arena. Ross Fletcher and Nick Olchek with you. As I mentioned, no goals right there. We're looking at the impact someone like Matty Paneers might make in his full rookie year. We got a little taste of him in that first 20 minutes, didn't we? And we got a little taste of him doing a lot of different things as well. A couple of great opportunities in this one really early in the period. Bjorkstrand, but the play he made prior was a really nice giving goal play where he moved the puck and then he moved himself, drived the back door able to win a face-off in the neutral zone, and then a couple of great looks on the power play as well. He is going to make a name for himself, and I think make a home for himself on that right flank. A lot of different options when you can play in that position. You can look back to the point, you can hit Bjorkstrand as the bumper roll right in the middle, or you can take the shot like he did, a one-timer, or you can maybe take a quick step to the middle and improve his angle that way. He's done a lot of good things so far. Now it's about building. Now it's about gaining that confidence and that consistency. 
consistency, but keeping in mind, it's only game one. It's only game one, looking to impose himself in this game on the top line. Let's flip it around and look at what Martin Jones has had to do in net for the Kraken. Here's Tom and Allison. All right, guys, thanks so much. Look, first game in a Kraken uniform for Martin Jones last season with Philadelphia. What'd you see? What'd you like? It, I mean, this was overall really a quiet first period. You're seeing two teams trying to figure themselves out. Edmonton had a little bit more oomph in terms of overall shot volume. So you'd like to see Seattle maybe up their tally there in general, but there isn't a lot of quality coming off the Edmonton sticks just yet. A lot of Edmonton's quality is coming at five on five. So a better advantage at even strength would be key for the Kraken going into period two. But Martin Jones is really doing a strong job turning away what he has faced up to this point. So again, even with that goaltender interference or that destabilizing, destabilizing play against him, this early play from him is good to see. He did a terrific job with six saves and got some help out front because seven block shots for Seattle in that opening period, just three for Edmonds. So an encouraging start for Martin Jones. And right here, former T-Bird Noah Phillip with Edmonton. Thought he had a goal, waved off due to interference. We are scoreless in Seattle. There's more Kraken intermission coming your way on Root Sports. This may be the last big hurrah. You have to do something dramatic, and you have to do it now. Mets, Braves, a division title still up for grabs on Sunday Night Baseball. This year, we're teaming up to bring you Monday Night Football. And we're back for 10 more weeks. Either way, you can't lose. Well, unless you have to wear suits to work. Or you have to leave your basement. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Are you ready for football? No, really, are you? Are you screaming for football? Freezing for football? Oh yeah, I'm freezing my booper off. And dreaming for football? I love you, Josh Allen. Are you crafting, parenting, naming your pets, and loosening up for football? Kelsey catches cleanly in coverage. Kelsey catches cleanly in coverage. Are you manifesting for football? Are you losing it for football? Are you breaking up with me? For football. Oh. Honey, she just said Rams. Perfect pass, Patrick. It's a good-looking brat. Who day? Touchdown. Are you dancing, flexing, feuding, jonesing, burrowing, and manning-ing for football? Are you prepping, bracing, and getting hyped for an all-new season of football? Good. Then you're ready.
be back inside climate pledge arena the preseason underway ahead of the second season for your seattle uh, kraken a scoreless opening period against the edmonton oilers let's connect right now with piper shaw who's with alex winberg Alex, you are in the unique position in that you have played with both Burakovsky and Bjorkstrand in the past. From your experience, what makes each of them a great addition to this team? Oh, I mean, uh, the speed right now and obviously how to shoot the puck. Two goal scorers right there really know how to find the back of the net. And I mean, I feel like every team, we want those kind of players, so we're really thrilled to have them here. So. You're the veteran of the centers on this, team's, on this team with younger guys like Geeky and Wright and Beneers. How much of a leadership role have you taken on in that position? Well, I try to be better. I mean, obviously, like now, uh, I feel young, but I am old. Uh, and I mean, obviously, a little experience and this young guy coming in, I just try to do the best I can to help him out. I mean, obviously, I've been in the same spot. I know how it is. And for me to just help him out and get better and better, I mean, that's the least thing I can do for them. Well, you can't put too much stock in these preseason games, but what kind of opportunities are on the table for players in these games? No, I think that it's really important games. Obviously, right now, you have an opportunity to show the coach what you want to do. Like you said, you can look at the games and be like, hey, you just play through them, but I feel like you can really find chemistry. You can find ways to improve your game, so might as well take the opportunity and make the best out of it. All right, Alex, thank you for the time. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Hey, I love the fact he calls these really important games because for this franchise, they certainly are. All right, first period to second period, Seattle is going to be on the penalty kill. This is something we dove into last season, did a little research on in terms of effectiveness for the team that is on the power play. Stick tap to our own JT Brown, who raised this last season. This isn't as bad as it may sound for the Kraken because teams that have a power play split over an intermission are usually not as effective with that break in between. There's a lot of theories why JT has a bunch. We'll dig into them later this year, but this could be a nice way for the Kraken to start preventing any sort of specialty teams action against them. Opportunity to build another part of this team's overall game, no doubt about that. Hey, be sure and be here for the Seattle Kraken regular season opener on October 12th. Don't miss a moment or a memory this season. Check with your provider to make sure they will carry Seattle Kraken games on Root Sports all season long. Second period on the way on Root Sports. Stick around. It's Ford SUV season. Time to gear up for changing conditions on and off-road. You know soccer can be long, too dramatic. Well, I'll give it up. Bundesliga football may not always be perfect, but Bundesliga is football as it's meant to be. America. Is my hair on fire? Not yet.
Well, they've replaced the batteries in Brandon Town. They've got like he, why he's first out of the locker room, ready for this second period. The Oilers and the Kraken locked at zeros. Ross Fletcher, Nick Olchek with you. They'll start on the penalty kill here, the Kraken, but you're hoping to see more power play opportunities coming up, right? Yeah, the special team's got a little bit of a workout in that first period. Couple of opportunities on the power play. We can talk about the penalty kill as the period and whatnot goes along, but a little bit more shooting mentality, I think, for the power play. It's going to open up other options. Enzo talked about it. They got some real threats to shoot at Burakovsky, Beniers. We saw a couple of one-timer opportunities but don't forget how about Oliver Bjorkstrand right in the middle. One-timer option, but also can be a facilitator of the puck. And you want to see a little more physicality like we saw early on with Riker Evans. That's how you make your mark in this league. 61 points in 63 games last year in Regina in the Western Hockey League. Was a very impactful player on the offensive side, but we are really starting to see a physical impact from him. Keep that going and make your mark. Okay, time for period number two with a tremendous trio. John, <laughs> Eddie, and JT. Wow, hold on, Rob. Hold on a second here. It's well, early, hold on. I know. Oh, wait a second. I got no, plenty I, more plenty more negative ones to oh, come through no, the season, but I'll start high. I, I want to go back to the first one. You're sitting next to the younger, absolutely 100% old check. <laughs> I knew but, you'd but come you back with say, that. You said better looking? Is that what you said? Uh, I'll have to check the tape on that one, Eddie. Sorry. <laughs> you know what I always say when it comes to Nick. Thank goodness for mom. Okay, okay now go. let's right. get into the first period <laughs> yeah. from the mental standpoint for the Kraken. Well, look, I, I think you look at it a couple different ways and JT could certainly add on to this when we get the opportunity but as a veteran guy you're trying to get your reps and you're trying to get in game condition Johnny you're just trying to get through training camp quite frankly and then get to the first game of regular season when you get young guys right trying to make a mark right you're trying to send a message to Ronnie Francis and the staff and the coaches so it, it's different for the veteran guys and for the young guys. All right, JT, you're in the middle of it all down there. What do you expect in the second period? Well, I definitely expect a little bit even faster pace than what we saw. Every time you get into this, it's the first game. You're kind of feeling it out a little bit. Now everybody's had a couple shifts. They've taken the hits. They've given the hits. Now it's time to settle in and get this thing going. Well, 11 shots in the first period of preseason. Five taken by the Kraken. Must have had four or five attempts in the last what, minute and a half to yeah. two minutes, right? Well, don't turn down any opportunities, I'm sure, for Coach Dave Haxtell and his staff. Again, those subtle little reminders. Second period here. Remind our fans, the long change. Your bench is the farthest away from your defensive zone, so maybe you can take advantage offensively, but defensively, you got to make sure you have good, smart changes in this long change of the second period. Ah, yes, the second period of the long change. We talked about it a great deal last season. Yanmark defers to the outside for Kevin Shore. Matthias Yanmark sealed off on the wall by Edmonton's Derek Ryan. Looked like young Noah Philp had scored a goal for Edmonton in the first period. It was waved off as Martin Jones, the Seattle goaltender, was brushed on the play. No challenges in preseason. Derek Ryan over the line, broken up by Riker Evans. It slid deeper in the zone for Yanmark. He was pinned there by Adam Larson. Nice job by Wenberg, Johnny, to come all the way down there from his forward position. The Kraken have 30 seconds left on the kill. Brandon Tanev in the box. He interfered with Edmonton goaltender Olivier Rodrigue late in the period now. Edmonton carries out. Talked a lot about the power play struggles, but as well as the penalty kill last year, but more options for Dave Haxtell and his staff with the acquisitions. Different opportunities and guys getting slotted, probably a more comfort zone there. But that's worth it. Moves it across. Shot taken by Kesselring is denied. Hit him in the mask. Martin Jones up high. He wants a whistle. He's got a problem with his mask. Tanev out of the box. Even turns on the ice. Turbo goes to work. Short side bid. Rodriguez got in the way. It comes all the way back. Rafferty, he'll walk it. He'll delay, stretch it out. Wrist one. It goes wide. Petro Sepola for Brandon Tanev. Stood up defensively by young Kesselring. And Matty Beneers goes to work. Jones got his uh, own mask pick. I think the uh, buckle came undone. The snap after that high, hard shot. Martin Jones, this is like a homecoming for him. He's from North Vancouver. Seppala, Veneers to the forehand with a shot. He scores! Near 
entire party is screaming. Look at that reception there by Matty Beneers. Off balance, backhand, moves it up, outside the dots, and goes short side, top shelf. That probably be considered a bad goal if you're a goaltender or an Edmonton Oiler from Rodrigue, but that thing was absolutely just labeled in place, top shelf, JT. Beautiful release, and the Kraken with a one nothing lead. You're right, there really wasn't much room. It was just a perfect shot. Great for Matty Veneers, a great pickup right there on the puck. You like to see him skating right now with the confidence. That goal will definitely give him even more. Here he comes again. Yorkstrand with a shot. Nice stop by Rodriguez. How about those hands by Yorkstrand going backhand, forehand, all in one motion. And Rodriguez with a beautiful save. And eventually trickled in behind him. But a good entry there by Matty Beneers. And then Oliver Bjorkstrand with the really quick hands going backhand forehand not necessarily how hard you shoot the puck johnny but it's the release when you get a chance to show everybody that replay you can certainly see the quickness that that puck left off the, the stick the oilers now clear it in Riker evans back to get it play it back for adam larson who has a clean look up the ice he'll head man it off a stick it went off jacob melanson turned back in the zone noah phil Taken in a hard way to the wall by Petman, then he pays the price. Yeah, Petman did a, had a really good hit, and then Esposito came in, and but he interfered with him, but the referees say play on. Shot taken by Tyson Berry, easily detected by Martin Jones. There we go. Keep an eye. Take another look at the reception there by Matty Veneers. Again, never a bad play, right? To fire the puck at the net, but there was certainly a purpose with that shot, as you can see as the goaltender was going down, there was really only one place it could go, and 2-12 in. And here's gives the Kraken a one nothing lead. Petro Cephala gets the only assist on the goal scored at 2-12 by Matty Beneers. At nine points in the last ten games of the regular season after his college season was completed at the University of Michigan. First ever draft choice taken by the Kraken. Second overall in the 21 draft. Out in front, Tanev. Shot by Schultz goes wide on the stick side of Rodrigue, and it comes all the way back. Martin Jones out to get it. We were told this morning by Dave Haxtall the goaltenders will split tonight. Joey Decord is the number two goaltender for Seattle this evening. Geeky now with a weak shot denied by Rodrigue. Yes for Froden. Brandon Tanev looks around, plays it deeper by Hamplin, and now it's hunted down by the Krakens. Yes for Froden on a cycle. Morgan Geeky pass detected by Yamamoto. The Oilers free out to center ice, carried along by Tyler Benson. He'll move it across one timer wide by Kyler Yamamoto. He'll get it back in the circle. Set up the point, man. The shot taken by Peters is blocked out in front. Rafferty now with an errant pass. The Oilers on it. It's loose in the high slot. Kiki gets it out to center. JT is a mirror. Has this game gone to another level speed-wise here? Oh, too many men on in the ice here. Yeah, it's definitely picking up. That's that first period you're getting into the game, allowing the nerves to settle in for some players, but it's definitely picked up the pace here in the second period. Well, face-off play for the Kraken. They're going to win this puck back here, but watch the routes that everybody take as they enter the zone. Sometimes it's just not a formality here. Everybody's got a purpose. Puck goes around the boards. You have support coming over by Tanov. Good support by Geeky, and the Kraken are out of the zone. Bench minor, too many men on the ice. Ryan Donato will serve it for Seattle. Third power play, Edmonton now Barry, he'll quarterback it. Here's Derek Ryan. Tyson Barry moves it across. Yanmark with a shot, sealed off, no rebound, given up by Martin Jones. Well, some confusion at the bench, Edzo. Here we go. Yeah, left part of your screen. Somebody looks like they're going to go and make the change. And... 
think it was Froden that waved his hand like he was going to come, and then he didn't, and then the player jumped on the ice for him, and linesmen and referees make the right call. So, look, if you wave, unless you're giving up a breakaway, you, you got to go to the bench because you're going to sell out the guy that's jumping on for you. Derek Ryan down the wall, Yamamoto downstairs, vacated point. You see it come all the way back in the Edmonton zone. JT, I really like this combination for Dave Haxtell and the Kraken with Wenberg and Domskoy out there killing penalties up front. Did a very good job last year, too. Domskoy was a big part of being on that penalty kill. Billy Petman, Edmonton had numbers back. The young Finn Petman signed as a free agent in the offseason by Ron Francis. Now... Tyson Berry. He had that big hit a little bit earlier, too. Batman did. Jake Vertanen moves in on Kepney. Lays it all the way back. Seth Griffith to the slot. Schaefer with a shot off a body off Kepney. Griffith will reset it for Edmonton. Seth Griffith broke it up, hurried up by Tanev. Now it's reset by Hamblin. Back it goes. This is Reed Schaefer. His shot blocked again. Michael Kepney. Three for a dollar. <laughs> That's always good. Now at the point. Hamblin goes across. Griffith. He got it. That's four, right? Huh? That's I, it. I can count. Now it's caught <laughs> out by Petman. You say that a couple of times. And it comes all the way back. 20 seconds left on the Kraken kill. That's a heck of a job there by Michael Kempney. John Edso, JT with you. And it's not only the shot blocking, but also sending a message. And especially those young players, right? Seeing right. a guy like that that's been around the block. Hamblin out in front, broken up, smothered by Jones. Five seconds left on the power play. How did he stop that? Wow. He missed it with the stick. Hey, he went to fan it. Yeah, he went to fan it into the corner, right. and he just missed it and ended up squeezing those pads together and making like a sneaky peeker there when he turned around, hoping that thing didn't uh, get below the goal line. Add it all away, JT. I was wondering if JT would add anything to that stellar comment. Now off the draw. <laughs> There's nothing to add. That was perfect. <laughs> Sepala. Veneers. Donato's out of the box. Donato for Bjorkstrand off his stick. And it's taken back now and played along by Luke Esposito. Now to center. Rafferty. Petro Sepala. And an assist on the Beneers goal. 12.47 like left. Sorry, John. You'd like to see Seppola keep that puck away from the goaltender there. You know you're trying to get the line and get it in, but get it in with a purpose, right? Keep it away from the goaltender. And sometimes goaltenders can be the uh, you know, third defenseman out on the ice. Preseason game number one for the Kraken. First of six. Calgary is here tomorrow night. They had a split squad effort yesterday, won them both, and now Sepala sends it across. Rafferty, Illinois native. It goes off the stick of Bjorkstrand. It comes all the way back in. I played hockey with his dad as a young kid back in Chicago. His dad, Brian, a former goaltender. Now up to center. Did you go easy on him in practice? Offside here on Donato. Uh, no, I did not. I figured as much. I know what that's like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Just get us the break. Let's go. Is that what I do? That's all I do. That's This is what he does. Maddie Veneers finds the magic. one nothing. Seattle. I'm bringing back my spicy chicken strips. And while I'm at it, my most popular former... To this. The postseason is on the doorstep. This may be the last big hurrah. You got it feeling like you have to do something dramatic and you have to do it now. Mets, Braves, a division title still up for grabs on Sunday Night Baseball. You know soccer can be long, too dramatic. Well, I'll give it up. Bundesliga football may not always be perfect, but Bundesliga is football as it's meant to be. There is nothing like this atmosphere on Sunday Night Baseball. 
Raise those hands. Let everybody know you went deep. This is the time of year when things get real. Sunday Night Baseball. Sundays at 7 on ESPN. JT, somebody up here said three for a dollar. What did you think of Michael Ketney? It's <laughs> great on the penalty kill. It's doing the little things, staying in the lane, blocking shots three times, but this last one's the best one. A steam pass goes through. Edmonton's trying to find another one, goes down perfectly, gets that leg out. Those are the little things you have to do. Sacrifice the body. The coaches definitely love seeing a player do like do that in the first preseason game. Edmonton on a face-off win, dumps it in. Jones encumbered by Yamamoto. Oilers take over in the ring now. It's carried along, and Hamblin gets it back. Kessel ring shot glances off Jones. Hamblin out of the corner, hurried up by Wenberg, supported by Larson, and the big, big cat makes it happen for Donskoy, who takes a hit, gets it deeper in the zone for Andre Burakovsky. He throws a little snow at Kessel ring, and now Donskoy supports that. Burakovsky, he'll cycle out the pass off Yamamoto. Here's Riker Evans, tipped, denied by Rodriguez. Good tip, Wenberg in the circle. Had the tip, the first back for Riker Evans. Alex Wenberg from the boards, carries in. Passes out in front by Donskoy. It'll pinch by Larson. Tyler Yamamoto gets it back out like, to neutral like to see Wenberg shoot the puck there. Just fire it at the net. He tried to force that puck all the way across. And again, he is that type of guy. Pass first, shoot second. But sometimes we saw Maddie Benier just, you know, from a not a great angle, just go cross far and in. Reed Schaefer now will clear it deep in the zone. Kiki out of the corner. You know what that will do too, Johnny, is that that will open up those passing lanes down the road for right. Alex Wenberg, right? If the teams, because right. teams don't look at he's going to be a pass first guy. He loves to pass. Yeah. He's off the glass. Schultz now will take it deep. Nima Linen under pressure, double teamed in the corner, 10.25 left, second period. Kentney tees it up, Rockets one off the glass. Played back by Justin Schultz, he'll feed it to the corner. Tanev all the way across, Kentney does the same for Tanev. Brandon Tanev plays the possession game, Kentney at the line. Lays it along nicely, drawn in by Tanev. Excellent shift here. Schultz with a shot, you want that elongated shift. In the second period especially, that one tipped out of play for a stoppage. We talked about the incredible run by the Edmonton Oilers last year, getting to the conference finals, and there's head coach Jay Woodcroft, and also Dave Manson, former National Hockey League defenseman. Play with uh, Manso in uh, Chicago and uh, Winnipeg. But talking about those gentlemen before, the rookies went to Penticton, British Columbia, as a lot of National Hockey League rookies do. But Jay Woodcroft told me that Duncan Keith, I mentioned him, he retired from the Edmonton Oilers, now part of the management staff trying to figure it out, going to help out the youngs. He had all of the rookies over to his house wow. during that camp, that opportunity. And uh, as good as it gets, both on and off the ice from a guy like Duncan Keith, and now trying to figure out how he wants to take his next step forward in the great game of the National Hockey League. So a great gesture there by... Duncan Keith with all those young guys. Imagine getting invited to Duncan Keith's house. There is a rookie to come over and hang out and just talk a little bit of hockey and make you feel real comfortable. That's uh, that's what it's all about. What a great opportunity and a great opportunity for a new goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. Young Ryan Fanti from the University of Minnesota Duluth. JT. That's you know right. like that. That's right. <laughs> Got taken off Rafferty. In play. Out in front. Petman for Seattle cleans it up. Derek Ryan. Oh, look out. Heavy hit by Melanson from behind. They play on. McCormick will lug it out for Seattle. Loose stick on the ice. A little driftwood here. 9.05 left second period. Matty Beneers has the goal for Seattle. A 1 0 lead here. Preseason game number one. Beneers. Good step up there by Max McCormick. That was a good hit by Melanson. Now Paneers to the outside. Rafferty through center. Yorkstrand. Here's Donato. Ryan steps in the zone. Dogged a bit. Defended well. Played along the boards. And he comes out to center ice. Seth Griffith. A lead pass for Filth. 
Trickles out in front. Good back check by Beneers. He's ridden off the play by Luke Esposito. Griffith took a hit to make a play there. He almost made a heck of a play after absorbing a contact. Two on one if they hurry. Donato Bjorkstrand in front of shot angled off the defender. Good read by Donato there. Bjorkstrand had somebody in his back pocket. Didn't want to try to force it. Just get that puck to the net. Good block by Niemalainen of Edmonton. It comes all the way back in. 8.05 left in the second period. Little chip by Veneers. He'll hail a cab. He'll get off on a change here. Comes out to center. Open ice. Tyler Benson walks in. Denied by Martin Jones. Quality save on Tyler Benson. Good exit out of the zone by the Oilers. And Benson got a step. And went backhand, forehand, but Jones standing tall. Hamblin glances one off Jones. Yamamoto lets it go back. Kessel Ring holding on to it. Michael Kessel Ring will send it in through the slot. Cleaned up by Evans. Here's Burakovsky for the Kraken. Andre Burakovsky at the line. Good play by Alex Peters. That forced an offside. 7.26 left to go in the second period. Martin Jones. Let's just say the futures were up. Great stop oh, by Tyler Johnny. Benson. Mid-season corp. He agrees. <laughs> we'll see him soon. Not lately, by the way. <laughs> With Home Chef, your home cooking is home nailing it. Our classic all-in-one meal kits are simple enough for anyone and delicious enough for everyone. When it comes to making dinner, fill in the blanks with Home Chef. Delicious, meat simple. Get 16 free meals when you sign up at homechef.com. Raise those hands. Let everybody know you went deep. This is the time of year when things get real. Sunday night baseball. Sundays at 7 on ESPN. This year, we're teaming up to bring you Monday night football. And we're back for 10 more weeks. Either way, you can't lose. Well, unless you have to wear suits to work. Or you have to leave your basement. <laughs> nice. Very nice. We're making it happen. We're making it happen. is brought to you by Emerald Queen Casino, star of SNL, Hollywood, and now Emerald Queen Casino. See comedian Rob Schneider, September 29th. Tickets at emeraldqueen.com. What a night. Here in Seatown, Joey Decord, center stage. Getting an opportunity after a good end of the first half for Martin Jones. Joey Decord gets a opportunity here to you can practice all you want right JT you can take shots you can be in uh, you know inner squad games but nothing like getting into an actual game against uh, somebody that wants to do harm to you so to speak when it puts talking about putting pucks in the back of the net no you're right on with that one practices scrimmages yes they're always great but nothing replaces the the real deal being out in a game situation the angles, everything's going to be different. In practice, plays are set up for you. There's, you know exactly what's going to happen, where the shot's coming from. Right now, it's all reading and reacting. JT, you were forward in this game for a long time. What, what would be ideal if you're playing six exhibition games? How many would you like to play? Uh, I mean, I think it, it depends on the, each person. Me, I would probably like to play all of them if I could. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm I like surprised. hitting people. I went a whole summer without hitting people, so I'd want to go out there and try to take somebody to put them down. <laughs> Eddie, how about you? I'd say four. Four? Yeah. I'd say four is kind of ideal because the first one is, you know, you're just kind of feeling your way. Because, again, as a veteran guy, if, you, if you're a rookie, you're, if you... If, 
you're probably playing eight. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, if you've got true. six you're, scheduled, you're, you're right playing there. eight you're games, right? right? Maybe but now I'll change it to just the home games. Oh, there you go. No travel. Oh, no travel go. involved. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, it depends on where you're playing, though. So, <laughs> might have family or, you know, you might have to have a good a good nap. Who's got the fellow, best pillow comforter combo in the league, JT? Ooh. How about the Bill Penn and Pittsburgh? That's pretty salty. Not bad. <laughs> Enzo, you must have been a great roommate. <laughs> Ask our general manager. I will. <laughs> that's a that's a great feature. Out to center. We might have to have the uncut version along the boards. Wenberg for Seattle. Joey Decord, outstanding year with Charlotte in the American Hockey League last season. 34 games, 19 wins, and boys, your thoughts on Martin Jones? Not too bad. Oh, he was. He was, he was sharp. Uh, the team did a good job, JT, at least from up top, not giving up, you know, second, third, fourth chance opportunities. And you know, most goaltenders at this league, at this level, or, you know, if they see it, they're going to stop it. So I, I thought you got to feel very good about that game. Rorkovsky off a stick off Tyson Berry, a keep by Riker Evans, Reed Schaefer. What a year he had for the Seattle Thunderbirds last year. Decord moves it, sets up Donato. He'll carry in. He'll circle the way. Yes. Ryan Donato brings the house down. Two nothing. Kraken. How about the primary apple here? Talking about Joey Decord and look at the high fives coming from Donato and Decord at the blue paint. The quick up, the long change again in the second period. And Donato's able to reach all the way around there, JT, and put it into the back of the net. Great heads-up play, like you said, from Decord. It's the long change. You see Edmonton is late on their change. Donato with the presence to go all the way around. What a play. We've seen plays like that from him before. A great start for Ryan Donato here. And it also the key is, too, was the contact by Donato, trying to make a hockey play. Goaltender ends up losing his stick, loses his balance, so to speak, and he's able
the Kraken Community Iceplex. Check out the players as they get set and practice for the upcoming season. Days and times vary, but you won't want to miss this cool experience. Visit NHL.com slash Kraken for the latest updates. He stumbles with the puck, but it's the poise to stay with it, get that wrap around it in. He had a career year last year looking for great things again this year. He can play up and down your lineup, and that's what makes him so valuable. Dave Haxtell talked about that the other day, visited with Ronnie Francis about Donato. You play him on a top line with your most skilled guys, or you can you know, play him in a role position. A penalty was called out of that disturbance as we went to break the Kraken on the power play. Tyler Benson in the box for slashing. 4.35 left second period. 2-0 Seattle. Shorthanded chance possibly. Derek Ryan goes off. Justin Schultz and it's scooped up by Joey Decor. Got to be careful here. It's a simple play. Putting the puck back to the front. Schultz is in the right spot. Just goes off the stick. Decord's got to be ready for that. You never know when that puck's going to bounce back towards your net. Good on Decord for being ready and sharp. Good thing Schultz was able to bounce that puck back into him. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to do, too. Yeah. Coming in halfway through the game, you've been sitting, you've been cold, and then a little weird bounce like that happens. Good on Decord. Yeah, no bullpen that I know of. Uh, no. That's uh, down the street. Okay. Yeah, the bullpen's right. down the street. Good luck to the Mariners. Day off today. Back at it tomorrow. Laid off the boards. The stretch run is underway. Catch all their action right here on Root Sports. It's cleared out to center. Decord now back on it. 55 seconds left on this power play for the Kraken. Riker Evans. Get to see this power play enter nicely here and then go get the puck and go to work. Laid off the glass by Ryan Fanti. It comes out to center. Second goaltender tonight for Jay Woodcroft and the Edmonton Oilers. Rafferty drops it off. Here's Evans. 30 seconds on the power play. Geeky gains entry. Somebody's got to help him over there. There you go. To the point. Evans walks it, shoots it, blockered along by Fanti. It goes high in the netting and down to a fan. Great catch. Look at one thing here that Riker Evans was waiting for. I think he was waiting for somebody to get to the front of the net here. But again, everybody was working, trying to get the puck down, and he said, you know what? Not going to take any any chances here. He could have moved the puck, obviously, over and over to Brogan Rackfordy, who had the stick ready to go. But again, pulling it off the wall. Nice job there off the backhand of the forehand. But sometimes you just... Less is more. Just go ahead and get that puck directly to the net. But most guys will tell you when they walk the wall like that, they're waiting for somebody to get there because they know most goaltenders are going to stop that puck from that far out. 19 seconds on this power play. Maybe not you, Johnny, but you know what I mean. I, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking up what you're laying down most of the time. Yeah. JT. <laughs> He's right, though. I'm not. He's not wrong. No. <laughs> Are you reading a script? That's <laughs> cleared out. Just like I'm texting him right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yorkstrand will thread it off the glass. Kicks around. Moved to the outside by Hamlin, and now Nima Linen gets it out for Edmonton, right in front of that Kraken bench. Max McCormick will dump it in. Warner back on it. 2.49 left in the second period. 2 0 Seattle on goals by Matty Beniers and Brian Donato. An Oiler taken down Malotson. in the center zone. Malotson, a high hit. Tyler Benson looks to police it for Edmonton. James Hamblin was taken down by Jacob Malonson. The physicality is certainly picked up. Good hit there by Max McCormick, and then Seattle 63 has been set a five-minute penalty. The play will now be reviewed. All right there, head contact, principal point of contact. That's just one of those where you just can't make that play. As a young player, I know you're trying to make your mark, but I mark that down as a bad penalty. That, that can't happen. Tough play, contacts there. 
I want to say blindside, but certainly not able to protect himself. A defensive play, a defenseless player, excuse me. They couldn't tell if it was the elbow or the shoulder, but certainly a penalty. After video review, the call on the ice has been confirmed. A match penalty for a legal check to the head. Match penalty. Yeah. Suspendable hit yep. without question. So we'll be having a conversation with the Department of Player Safety in the National Hockey League. In game, this will be a five-minute penalty. So the Kraken will be shorthanded five minutes. Coach Dave Hackstall will need to put somebody in the penalty box to serve. So really, you're down two players now. Right. right. And Edmonton has the full five minutes of to score as many goals as they, they want on a five-minute penalty. And, and Ryan Donato's going to, he won't get credit for the five minutes, but that's one of those situations where Watson has to, he has to learn from that and understand that the defenseless player there, you can't, just can't do that. You also have players back, too. It wasn't a, a situation he needed to take that hit. The puck is gone. He could have just gone and got the puck as well, and instead he decided, decided to hit him in that situation. You can let him go in that. For our new fans and older fans, too, the officials can review those major penalties, take a look at their work, determine whether it stands, which it does here, obviously, or take it down or take it away. Oh, yeah, it could have been a major, could have, you know, lots of different ways to go there, but when you hear match, uh, that's that's not good. And a new wrinkle this season is the fact that they can wipe it out, too, instead of just taking it down to a minor, as in years past. Now, Barry with a shot, oh, tipped, what a save. denied by Decord. He'll hang on without rebound. Well, Tyson Barry really does a nice job. He always has his own National Hockey League career, walking from one side of the ice to the other, from the boards to the middle, walk, and then a quick little wrister. Yamamoto with the redirect short right in her front of Joey Decord and makes a really, really good save. That's an outstanding save with net front presence by Shore. And a lot of young defensemen can learn from this shot. He's not trying to score on this play. He's just getting it past the first layer, allowing his players in front to get a tip. Not every shot from the point has to be up high where it's trying to shoot for a goal. Major power play, match penalty, Jacob Melanson. Oilers can get as many as they can without the man coming back. A buck 48 left to go in the second period. Amazing, a guy like Tyson Berry, right, had, was outstanding in Colorado. Ends up in Toronto and just didn't work out in Toronto, right. and then I found, finds a new lease on life in, in Edmond. One season with the Maple Leafs. Now Benson, front ice Griffith to the slot wide. Jake for Tannen. Okay. Stake down. Heck of a passing play there by the Oilers. Moves the puck from one side of the ice to the other, and... For Vertan and the former Vancouver Canuck didn't hit the net. Short-handed on a change, Max McCormick. Never could get a handle there. Good idea there by Wenberg. Just that presence of vision of knowing where teammates are and knowing where outlets might be. 103 left to go in the second period. Reed Schaefer all the way around. Tyler Benson double-teamed on the wall. Riker Evans, Max McCormick, they jockey for it. A great look there as they tie it up. Out of the scrum, it's dug out. Griffith tries to move it. He's 23 in the white. Benson ties it up for the Oilers. Back it goes for Tannen. Cross ice, settled down by Tyson Berry. The defender is Billy Petman, who dogs him beautifully. Nice, nice. And he sets up McCormick. Short-handed. Breakaway. Max McCormick to now. By Ryan Fanti. Oh, great defense leads to that short-handed opportunity. Petman was the guy. Benson with a shot kicked out with a purpose by Decord. Zone kept by Yamamoto. Kyler Yamamoto. Seth Griffith. Back it goes. Barry. 14 seconds left in the period. Devin Shore looking for Yamamoto. Now Griffith once again. Nine seconds left in the period. Around the clock. Devin Shore off a stick. Out. Good stick by Tanev. It goes out of play. Almost took off Larson too there. That good stick by Tanev. As you mentioned, Johnny. Great play here by Petman along the boards. Great stick. Pressure. Force Barry into no man's land. Quick little help. And then the chip. And then here comes Max. Right down the middle. Tries to go five hole. And a good save there. By Fanti. Morgan Geeky and Devin Shore on the draw, and Geeky wins it back. 
That'll do it in the second period. Two in the books. Eric Klein at Pledge Arena. Stay connected for Kraken Intermission presented by Chateau St. Michel, the official wine partner of your Seattle Kraken. Natty Beneers and Ryan Donato, they're blood brothers, and they connect as the Boston boys come through for the boys from Puget Sound. And after 40 minutes at Climate Pledge Arena, 2-0, Seattle. Bryce Young and Big Al's epic arm wrestling match continues. Think you can take down a Heisman quarterback? Scan the QR code and find out. You got me feeling like there is nothing like this atmosphere on Sunday night baseball. Raise those hands. Let everybody know you went deep. This is the time of year when things get real. Sunday night baseball. Sundays at 7 on ESPN. Sports? I've seen it all. Well, I've seen as much as I've seen, you know. And I don't have favorites, but I do have something to say. You know soccer can be long, too dramatic. I'll give you the Bundesliga. It's a whole other game. It's got rhythm, intensity, tempo. It's like good jazz. Now that the fam is reunited, it's time to celebrate our hometown heroes. Football may not always be perfect, but Bundesliga is football as it's meant to be. MLS is on ABC. Portland Timbers versus LAFC. Sunday, Portland Timbers versus LAFC at 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Better run through the jungle. Kraken Intermission is presented by Chateau St. Michel, the official wine partner of the Seattle Kraken. Well, after a goalless first period, the Kraken ignited this home crowd in the second with goals from Matty Beneers and Ryan Donato to lead the Oilers to zip. 
after two in this first pre-season game of the 2022-23 season. Ross Fletcher, Nick Olchek with you. And the noise from the crowd, they're in mid-season form when those goals are in. <laughs> I can barely hear myself think with even these headphones on, Ross. Doesn't matter if it's game one in the preseason, game seven in the Stanley Cup final. These people are really loud. And it's only going to get louder as well. Matty Benias got them going early in that second period. Break the goal down for us. Pure goal scorer's instinct. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything in this game for Matty Benias, but this goal starts with a really strong play and a smart play and a safe play from Brandon Tanev. He's going to gain the blue line, keep it wide, keep it simple. He's going to drive wide. Then they're going to get sustained pressure. They're going to go to work. There's Tanev again, but watch the play he makes here. He's going to force a defenseman to make a decision. Go D to D, continue to pursue, and then eventually force the turnover. Sepola steps in front and is able to eventually get it over to Matty Beneers and to be able to work it from his backhand to his forehand, and that is just a nasty angle. I mean, that is just only an area where the puck could fit. Goaltender down a little early, but a great read from Matty Beneers. And if you could see in the celebration after the goal, he gave Ryan Donato kind of a little look as in a little bit of a head nod saying, I've done that once or twice before, but so many great things to like about Matty Beneers in this game. Again, we saw face-off win earlier, defensive play, back-checking, give and go, and a heck of a shot on that first goal of the game. Real example of the confidence of Matty Benez wearing 10 and carrying on his great work from late last season. Let's pick up the second goal. Ryan Donato's now with Tom and Allison. All right, guys. Hey, I, I like that first goal. Don't get me wrong. But, Allison, I think we got the better of the two goals. That's why it's our Chateau Saint-Michel taste of quality. Joey Decourt, the assist machine in goal. Gets it going. Well, any goal is a good goal, Tom. But what I really like here is Joey Decourt has just come in the game. He's just under two minutes of action. And with really quick eyes and hands, he's able to lift up his gaze to see that Ryan Donato is open. Now, we know about Ryan Donato's game. He has that ability to drive to the dangerous areas. He is not afraid to crash the net. Settle, but Ryan made a little move on that defender to get around him. Very pretty play. We like them both. We like that one a little bit better. Uh, I'll tell you what else we like tonight in goal for the Kraken. Martin Jones, nicely done. 13 saves in his Kraken debut. Stick around. Piper Shaw with Ryan Donato just ahead on Kraken Intermission. Shopping for car insurance is the worst. Not anymore. This quote says $153 a month for the same coverage. Here's one for $160. We made sure it's apples to apples. That's the same as the yeah. Those are top rated. Driver's same as deductible. Great work, guys. Experience like having a team comparing your current policy to quotes from top providers. It's a new easier way to shop and save on car insurance. I saved over 900 bucks. Experience helps. We compare, you save on car insurance. Go to experience.com slash car. MLS is on ABC. Portland Timbers versus LAFC. Sunday, Portland Timbers versus LAFC at 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC. MLS is on ABC. Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC.
Kraken Intermission is presented by Chateau St. Michel, the official wine partner of the Seattle Kraken. A couple of boys from Beantown delivering for the Kraken in the second period. Matty Beneers with the first goal and then the wraparound courtesy of Ryan Donato made it 2-0 over the Oilers. Here's Piper Shaw with Mr. Donato. Ryan, let's start with that wraparound goal. Can you walk me through how you read that play from Decord at the other end of the ice? You know, it's funny. Um, I was just thinking back to it. I used to play against JoJo in high school. I think about three or four times I've seen him do that. So as soon as he got the puck, I saw his eyes go up. I was like, uh-oh, here we go. And, uh, yeah, it was a good play by him. Well, that's where that chemistry comes in handy. Speaking of chemistry, playing with Bjorkstrand and Beneers, how's that comfort been with that line? It's definitely been good. Obviously, it was a little different at the beginning with a lot of penalties. We were trying to get into flow, but after we got into a flow a little bit, the chemistry started going. We were getting our chances. What stands out to you in terms of differences between this team and early on, the, early on this year and the team last year? It's definitely more familiar. I mean, last year, everybody's come from different places, playing different systems. Uh, we're coming in here this year knowing what's expected of us, and obviously we have our buddies and teammates here now, and uh, it feels like a family and uh, definitely a team that you uh, want to play for. All right, Ryan, well, nice work, and good luck in the third. Thank you very much. Great memory going back to high school. Hey, watch every crack and goal and catch every unforgettable moment right here on Root Sports. Check with your provider to see if they will be carrying your Seattle Kraken all season long on Root Sports. All right, Ryan had no trouble. Ryan Donato getting past goalie Ryan Fanti, but he had a little more trouble getting through the door to the Kraken locker room. Let him in. Let him in. Well, it's preseason. That's how it goes sometimes. Stick around. We got more intermission coming your way. MLS is on ABC. My own fire? Not yet.
some more, Ben? Thanks, kids. I heard the Kraken wants you to help with our new mascot search. And to get you started, I brought some special friends with me. Good luck. Wow, it's Doppler missing Sammy. Let's go start the search. Yeah. Okay. The first idea we have is from Detlev. Hello, everyone. How's it going? I want you to think about Seattle's most iconic mascot from 2008. But we weren't even born yet. Good point. Well, anyways, here it is. The Seattle Kraken Squatch. Everyone loved the Squatch's acrobatics in the Sonics days. But the Sonics will come back to Seattle one day. You're right. The Sonics will be back. Besides, the Kraken mascot has to be something new that our fans will love. Well, good luck on your search. Oh, the plot thickens not long to go before the big mascot reveal. Here, heading into the third, the Kraken lead Edmonton. 2-0. Well, the last time I tried this, Eddie gave me a whole load of abuse. So let's just say welcome back, John Forsland. <laughs> well, He's a quick learner. He is. He's right on the money, as always. I hope they have auditions for the mascot. We might, I might want to get involved anyway. Let's talk about that second period. The Boston boys coming through. JT, you start with Matty Beneers. Well, it's really great to see Beneers pick up where he left off last season. You can tell all of that hard work has been paying off. And again, you can talk about Beneers, but there's another player that had a great period as well. Yeah, Ryan Donato, uh, JT, and... He's uh, serving that penalty for Melanson, that five-minute match penalty. But they, for a guy like Ryan Donato, we touched on a little bit earlier. Just his versatility. I think that's a, that's a great point for young hockey players out there to understand. And yeah, you may be a left-handed shot, and you prefer playing the left wing. If you can play the right side, if you can play center, if you can do the power play, if you can play the penalty kill, you're going to get more opportunity the longer you play in the game of hockey. Versatility is something that a general manager like Ronnie Francis or head coach Dave Axel loves the players, is that you can pencil pencil that player in anywhere and know that they can contribute. John Forsland, Eddie Olchek, and JT Brown between benches. We kick off the period with a great save from Joey Decord on Derek Ryan. Cracking on the kill for two minutes. Oh, that was an outstanding save. Not even 15 seconds into the third period. That is huge. We're just getting ourselves adjusted up here. And a great chance. Some quicker than others. Through center, Tyson Berry. Defensively marked by Riker Evans. To the point, Yanmark. It goes by him, Tanneth. Two on one with Morgan Geeky. There's Geeky. There's the goal. This play doesn't happen unless Joey Decord makes an incredible stop. Seconds into the period. Beautiful save there. And then watch this subtle little play here by Brandon Tanev. Right there, he just slows down. He goes from backhand to forehand. He puts it in the wheelhouse of Morgan Geeky. And the Kraken with a 3 0 lead. You also have a forward playing defense there. They were able to take advantage of that. Geeky again on and off the stick. Not much fancy can do there. Short-handed goal. 127 left on the Kraken kill. 3-0 Seattle. Preseason game number one. Tyler Benson retrieves it himself. Around the clock, Griffith swung along. Picked up Philip Broberg to the wall. Benson, nice detection by Morgan Geeky. He'll sail it out. 105 left. In terms of this penalty kill for Dave Hextall's team, up by three, 18.39 left in this third period. John, Edzo, and JT supported by our great crew. Calgary is here tomorrow night. Comes out to center ice. Seth Griffith will take over for Edmonton. He'll lug it out. Picked up by Billy Petman. Now Benson drops it back. 
Reed Schaefer, Benson along the boards. Indirectly back it goes. Alex Peters with a shot right off the goal post. Short side post on the stick side of Decord. Along the boards now, Peters again. Point to point passing with Griffith that goes off Petman. Rafferty out of the corner, can't clear. Good keep, Good keep by Peters. Moved in by Seth Griffith, back again, Alex Peters around the horn, Benson, he'll fumble it, shouldered by McCormick, Rogan Rafter, he tried to get it out, good stick by Petro Cephala, and it comes out to center. Wound up by Griffith, penalty has concluded. Major penalty killed off in a big way with a shorty from Morgan Geeky. Plus one or five minute penalty. 43 seconds into this period as we see the scoring summary. Ryan Donato has won tonight. Picked up by Alex Peters, supported. Kesselring can't get it out. Evans looking for a tip. Veneers on the board, sealed off a bit. It was Greg McKegg who was on him. The Oilers get it out. Noah Philp. McKegg. Sealed off beautifully by Adam Larson. Philp stood up by Riker Evans. They jam in the corner. Just over three minutes gone in this third period. Veneers tied up, rolled back. Niemalainen, Marcus Niemalainen feeds it all the way around. Oliver Bjorkstrand on a change, moves it out for Donato. He'll move in with open ice, drag it, shoot it, kicked out by Ryan Fanti. A nice job there of creating that space, making sure that the lane was open, and Fanti made a good left pad save. At the line now. Donskoy will take it back. Kempney moves it by Burakovsky. JT, what did you like the most about the kill, aside from the goal? Well, I think the best part is not allowing those cross-seam plays. If the pass does get over, they don't allow that second one. Did a good job getting in lanes. Decord comes across on Derek Ryan. And an outnumbered chance led by Devin Shore. Out of the corner. Wenberg for Seattle. One choice, he'll dump it ice. in. Might be icing. Oh, they waved it off. It's preseason. Move it along. Now it's played all the way back. <laughs> out of the corner. <laughs> Tyson Berry out through center. Got to have that suit back tonight by 10. Huh? I know that. You better now. Kempney will take it back. Move it across. I can give you a ride if you need it now. Tanev. <laughs> Taken down in a hard way. Seattle's Jesper Froden. And he was picked up by Luke Esposito, has the puck. They'll move it across. Barry with a shot. It goes wide to the boards now and back and through center. And Philip Broberg will hunt it down for Edmonton. One thing Edmonton has done a nice job of here tonight. They have found that second and third wave of players coming back. Defensemen, especially jumping into the play offensively. Want to take everybody back to the play by Brandon Tanov. And a goal by Morgan Geeky. So he's going to chip this puck up by, right? Now watch what ends up happening. Stop it right here. Watch his head movement. Watch what he does to recognize what are my options. Look at he looks over. He knows there's a two-on-one developing. He waits for Geeky to get open. Right-handed shot coming down the left side of the ice. Perfectly done by Brandon Tanov. Knowing what you're going to do with the puck before you get to it makes life awfully easy, or easier. Shot taken by Billy Petman goes wide, and what a emotional blow it was for Brandon Tanev. It was against this Edmonton team in late December when he sustained a, a very serious knee injury. Just a very popular player in a short period of time here. Infectious. Yeah. And when you take that out of the room, I want both of you guys to speak to it. It's a huge difference, isn't it? Well, in every aspect. You're looking for energy on the ice, looking for somebody to make a play, looking for somebody to say something. I mean, I remember when, when the expansion draft was going on and immediately I got a hold of Ronnie Francis and of course my brother Ricky here is a right-hand man for Ronnie. Not a smarter old check. I'll just say that for you, Johnny. No. You were dying to say it. But Some of us know that. I, I, I said he went to college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cornell and Brown. That's the closest I ever get to those two schools. <laughs> like I said, that like that. I love that. I love that pick. Yeah. You know, getting Dana from uh, from Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's definitely, it's as you're watching on the bench and you see a player like Tanev, 
you know, moving his feet, laying out his body for a check, for a block shot. It doesn't matter which one it is. A player like that, when you see it night in and night out, you can't help but to do it yourself. Donato goes to work. Centering feed, good stop by Fanti on Beneers. Donato swings it off the side of the goal, but a hand pass is called. So we have no more play. Well, you're mid-season form. Not really. 13:34 left in the third. <laughs> Stick around. So sweet, so. So it's Friday night dinner. All of a sudden, boom! And you get go go. Bundling your home and car insurance could save you hundreds. And then the neighbors are like, "Huh?" The little girl's like, "Hi, Gecko." Huh? Quite the commercial. I know, right? Geico. What if you were a global energy company with customers in different places on different systems? So you call in IBM and Red Hat to create an open hybrid cloud platform. Now data is available anywhere securely. Let's create a hybrid cloud that can change an industry. IBM, let's create. When you have auto glass damage, let Safe Flight come to you. <laughs> My customer enjoys time with her family. So when her windshield got a crack, she scheduled with Safe Flight in just a few clicks. We came to her house, replaced the windshield, and installed new wipers. That service on her time. Here you go. Wow, thank you. Bye. 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 Don't wait, schedule now. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. TV stream complete coverage of the Kraken for less than cable. Try free at FuboTV.com. Fubo TV Kraken calendar just for the preseason. So you can uh, memorize this. Ron Kong tomorrow night. Straight up, 7 o'clock. Canucks in Vancouver. Kong again Thursday. Back here Saturday night, October 1st. Vancouver in town en route. Then the road swing to northern... Alberta, Calgary, Edmonton to close it out. It's and then in California, Johnny, back to back, right? Ducks and Kings. And it gets real in Anaheim. The LA Kings in the home opener here against the Vegas Golden Knights. And we are going to have a boatload of fun. There's no doubt about it. Just about seven minutes gone in this third period. 3 0 Seattle. Goals by Morgan Geeky, who shoots in. Good smart play there. Speaking of Geeky, we try to stick handle through anybody. We know it's preseason. Don't have those good habits. Ryan Donato, Matty Beneers have the other two goals tonight for the Kraken. Up 3 nothing. Just make sure you get that puck in deep. Three on two here for the Oilers. Hamlin. This is Yamamoto. James Hamlin with a shot blocked by Michael Kempney. Oh, that's that's four blocks. Nice. Easy. Unofficially four. We'll have to check. That abacus is working well for you yeah. tonight. Yeah, the abacus is a is a great invention, by the way. JT, that's a little little before your time there, JT. I got you. I got no idea what you're talking yeah, exactly. about. Exactly. <laughs> you go on that World Wide Web thing. You can look it up. Yeah, you can look it up. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You can also go to abacus.com. Now Rafferty holding onto it with a shot off a stick. There, there has to be a website for that. Yeah. Right? Finally coming here. Okay. Wenberg, it's against Edmonton. Denied by Fanti. Good save with traffic. That was Rafferty to let that puck go. That thing exploded off his stick. Donskoy's checking the chicklets out. Edmonton number 14, minor penalty hooking. So Devin Shore takes a seat for hooking. Let's see if you can get Oliver Bjorkstrand an opportunity to unload one of those one-timers without stopping the puck, interchanging, moving around, being in the center of the ice. 
Let's see what kind of look the Kraken have here. And this unit has looked really sharp in the practices. Goal line, Wenberg off a stick off Ryan, held in Burakovsky. Here's Justin Schultz, his shot trickles through Fanti with traffic from Wenberg, and you see it come all the way back to Joey Decor. 140 left in the Kraken power play. Justin Schultz, Oliver Bjorkstrand. Drops it off for Andre Burakovsky. The two newcomers. Tyson Berry sealed off double team that time by Beneers and Burakovsky. It stays in play. Wenberg given a shove by Yamamoto. Bjorkstrand resets it. Schultz. Beneers blocked. Good block. Getting in the way of that one for the Edmonton Oilers was Philip Broberg. And now Schultz through center right on the money for Burakovsky. Bjorkstrand will stay on side. Yamamoto hurries up Beneers and Again, it's sent out. And tough to make a play there at the end of a long shift. Uh, not a lot of momentum entering the zone. JT, those entries are so important on the power play. Hey, you have to be able to use their speed. That short ice, when they're turning it up quickly, you don't have that speed. You have to make crisp passes, and as soon as one gets bounced, that's when Edmonton's going to jump. Jesper Froden coming back on Kesselring, who has a great stop oh, and a cover by Decor. Great effort there by Kesselring. Great play using his strength to get around Froden, but right out in front. Second opportunity, Decord sticks that right pad out there, is able to make the save. A little bit of pushing and shoving afterwards. Decord's look good so far. JT, here's the power play. This puck's going to go down to Wenberg, and he's going to have the opportunity here to just take the puck to the net. It is there. He's looking for he's looking for the backdoor right. option where you'd see yeah. Burakovsky, but he's too far up. He's all the way up. If you don't have that, like you said, there's just space it, for right? him to just take yeah. it to the net. You right. can wrap it to the far post. You can go to the five hole too. There's definitely options for him on that low play. Yeah. And if he does it one time, it opens up. Or another time, it's just going to open up those lanes. And again, teams and players, and now with video and, and everything else going with it, the, the tendencies of players and though, and look at. Sure, Allison could probably pull it up for us and say, look at when Wenberg gets the puck off the side of the net, the chances of him taking the puck of the net are probably less than 5%. So let's play the percentages, take away the passing lanes and know that he's not going to do it. But if he does it once or twice, all of a sudden words are going to get around the National Hockey League is that he is going to take it. So then those lanes, as JT touched on perfectly, will open up. The penalty has concluded. Shore on the ice. Even terms. Rafferty moves it all the way around, held in momentarily, but it skips the stick of Petman who gets back on it. Billy Petman now will sort it out. Rogan Rafferty will take it back. He played with San Diego in the American Hockey League a season ago. College hockey at Quinnipiac. Where he already established his Illinois roots. Now along the boards, Broberg nullified by Max McCormick, and it's sent in. Broberg moves it. Furthered by Barry, not out. Rolls around. Will shift. Good play that time by Petman. Tight turn by Tyson Barry. He'll take it back with 9.19 left in the third. 3 0 Seattle. Good play by Kepney. That'll stand right up. Keep that play alive. Set himself a strong game, at least from up top. This is Matthias Janmark through center. Good Off stick. stick. Who made yeah. that play? Michael Kepney. Again, a, a quiet signing, right? Free agent oh, signing. But you depth, know what? Depth guy. Yeah. Yeah. Where is he going to fit in? I mean, only time will tell. It, it's healthy. It's healthy for Dave Axtell and his staff with the moves that Ronnie has made. Penalty coming up here against Edmonton, I believe. Another hook. Is that the more depth you have, it just puts pressure on guys to perform? Because if not, you got somebody ready to take your job. Well, the power play when we come back. Great effort tonight by Michael. This just in. A giant robot has landed downtown. Hey, Craig. Hey, guys. This is just my workout stuff. If you have a secret identity, you need to keep it secret. And if you want to save by bundling home and car insurance, you need Geico. You're still wearing your mask, dude. The Hisense 100-day guarantee. You'll regret nothing about the TV. You'll still have all those regrets about the poor choices you've made in your life. Damn straight, semi-famous brand ambassador. And now you can get awarded $100 when you buy a Hisense Google TV. That's $100 if you love it. 
100 days to return it if you don't. Choose love. Choose Hisense. Hi, I'm Alok, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is it has that kick. Not too spicy, but it's just enough for your taste buds to feel that level of heat. And you're like, ooh, this is good. It's the perfect amount of spicy. Hi, I'm Capri, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is the chicken. You can tell they actually put it on the grill, cooked it in the sauce, marinated it. You're definitely getting a good grilled spicy sandwich. Okay, Mike, it's all you now. Divert the asteroid off its path. Where's Mike? He's getting a haircut. He's getting a haircut now? Technically, it's not just any haircut. It's super cuts. I'm in and out super quick. Start of the Seattle Kraken second season is just around the corner. Don't miss a second of the action. Check with your provider to make sure they will carry Kraken games on Root Sports all season long. Yeah, lots of changes for Seattle Kraken on the ice behind the bench. The man on the left, Dave Lowry, former interim coach of the Winnipeg Jets, longtime National Hockey Leaguer and longtime assistant coach as well in the National Hockey League. His son Adam, a terrific centerman for the Winnipeg Jets. Edmonton's Luke Esposito in the box for hooking. Burakovsky, Schultz with a shot blocked. Veneers in the ring. Moves it across beautifully. Burakovsky, Bjorkstrand, fans on it. Winberg's knocking on the door, and Fanti scrambles back with a net off the peg. I believe Bjorkstrand had the wide open net, and Wenberg, I think, stopped it. What a great pass. Right part of your screen. Burakovsky's going to get it. There's Bjorkstrand, and oh, yeah. Just hit something like hitting him in the pant leg there, JT. Yeah, he definitely got a piece of that. It's going to be going in. Oh, unintentional. Oh. Looks like right off the glove there. Stops one. But those are the lanes opening up yeah, right. from shooting earlier. Often, they've had a couple of looks here. Veneers was firing that one time, or this time he's able to send it across. The lanes are starting to open up for Seattle. Faceoff wins here to set up these plays huge as well. Great pass. Veneers, Burakovsky, now Schultz. Matty Veneers has won tonight. Justin Schultz, Burakovsky, good read. Matthias Janmark out to center, shorthanded. Gets a pass from Barry, then he's thwarted by Schultz. Little turn and out by Matty Beneers, the 19-year-old, through center from Hingham, Massachusetts. He was hooked on the way through. Another call as Edzo points out. 7.45 left in this third period. A great chance here for the Kraken. Excellent rush there by Beneers and uh, Matias Janmark, the veteran's going to go. Edmonton number 26, two minutes hooking. And the Kraken are going to get a five on three here for a buck three. Watch the stick there, right in there, right around the hands in the hip area. Throws Veneers off for this opportunity. JT, we've seen a lot of five on four in training camp practice, but off of uh, recollection, I don't think we've seen much of the five on three setup. Yeah, no five on three. Uh, you know, that's something that's probably going to take a little bit of time. You're not going to work on that day one, but you're getting a good look. Like you see Burakovsky go right back to Bjorkstrand there. One-timer, easy save for Fanti. Great puck movement here. Real good up. Like you see Burakovsky go right back to Bjorkstrand there. One-timer, easy save for Fanti. Great puck movement here. Real good opportunities. The puck was on edge. I, you know, now maybe looking at it, I think Veneers might have been firing at the net just because the puck was rolling. I thought he was trying to go rink wide over to Bjorkstrand. Lots of different ways, to a couple of different ways to play the five on three. You play a diamond or a, 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 a box in one, or you can also play 
Kind of a uh, two in front, an umbrella type of uh, situation with the five players on the power play. Three shots on so far for the Kraken. Beniers, Burakovsky. Beniers now will draw it away from a defender. Kesselring is on him. Turned back by Burakovsky. Walking the line is Justin Schultz. Going to get back from Beniers. Round the clock, Burakovsky. Schultz. Burakovsky. Schultz again. Beniers slams it. Good block. Kesselring. One man back. It's Esposito. Conventional five on four. Wenberg to the corner. Here's Matty Beniers. He'll dart. Create it. Shut down by Fanti. And Esposito gets it out. 40 seconds left on the five on four. You see the time left in this third period. The first of six preseason games for the Kraken. Calgary here tomorrow night. Donato. Geeky. Goes off Donato. He'll move it. Barry's on his horse. Jesper Froden there for Seattle. It's carried out. Derek Ryan. JT, I'm just thinking about the power play, right? Like that power play there and... You got Vince Dunn, you got Everly, you got Schwartz. Well, that's definitely a reminder. You know they're, I mean? still, they're still missing guys that aren't yeah. in the lineup that would be out on a right. power play situation, yeah. whether the that's depth, first right? unit, yeah, second the, the unit. Depth. It's going to make a, a lot of a difference. That's where, like you said, having a guy like Schultz, a right-hander, being able to take a couple one-timers in certain situations where maybe Vince Dunn wasn't able to last year, but then you can mix and match all the different combinations, whether it's four forwards and one defenseman on you, or you might go two defensemen. You never know. It just gives you more options. You see many of those guys tomorrow night, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure Shane Wright right. will get an opportunity yeah. tomorrow night. Adam Larson with a shot denied and a cover by Ryan Fanti. 5.39 left in this third period. Preseason game number one has been a dandy for the Seattle Kraken with a 3-0 lead here as we go down the stretch in Seatown. I got a game today. I need a ride. But it's only Saturday. Exactly. Oh, yeah. College kid. Who took my helmet? Ready. Oh. Where are my socks? I need more club. Have you seen my pads? Fashion. I'm coming, Baker. That's where we headed this week. Texas. Texas. Road trip. If you're always asking, where next? Capital One has the travel card for you. Venture X. Earn 10x miles on hotels and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Venture X. What's in your wallet? When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. You're trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head. What's your 11th? Shoot Casino, the biggest and best in the Northwest. Well, Edzo's been there. The corn maze at Stocker Farms in Snohomish. Now through October 31st, you can make your way through a hockey-themed maze with fun cracking facts popping up along the route. This is fun for Edzo, JT, the entire family. Visit StockerFarms.com for more details. That's where the Metropolitan Grill probably gets their cream corn from. I was there the other night. I'm sure you nice were. Nice piece of meat. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. Now, huh? as the ranch was check. taken down, another penalty will be called here. Shot by Kempney, denied by Fancy, who's played well. Donskoy sure has, has it. And the penalty will go the way of the Edmonton Oilers. Another power play for the Kraken. They're going to take McCormick here, too. Okay. There's the first one. Edmonton number 80, minor penalty, Elbering. 
Seattle, number 71, minor penalty for interference. Yeah, out in front after the shot, McCormick comes in and gives a little bit of a retaliation for that hit, and that's where you're going to get that second uh, penalty on Seattle, so negating the power play. Former Buckeye. Closer look right there, a little payback. Yeah, no doubt. And that's one of those where there's a management position, a coach takes notice of, you know, he's sticking up for one of the young guys, right? right. Bettman got hit, and I thought, uh, it, yeah, interference for sure, but just sending that message. James Hamlin, good stuff. Joey DeCord, who's been right on his mark. Both goaltenders have played well for the Kraken here tonight. Kraken out shooting Edmonton 12-4 in the third period. 26-22 in the contest. Now it goes deep. Left along the boards and Seppala got to it. Here's Schultz for the Kraken. Wenberg, Alex Wenberg for Tannen. Breaks it up. Tyson Berry at dead center now in the zone. Shifting. And he's broken up. Wenberg will deal it back. 4.35 left in the third period. Sorry, Johnny, you must have called a few games of Tyson's dad back in the day. Len Barry. Yeah, yeah. Hershey. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He played, he played in Philly and Pitt, if yes, I'm not he mistaken. Did. Yes, he did. And he yeah. was an excellent skilled player. Yeah. Yeah. And so the better question is, who hasn't he called <laughs> a game for? <laughs> JT, the yeah. floor is all yours. Well, Way to go. That's a haymaker. Just got to throw them every now and then. <laughs> My career started at the conclusion of the War of 1812. Now it's moved across, fed out in front, rolled around. Veneers moves it back. Rafferty, Veneers protecting the puck, moves it, rims it all the way around, and now it's played out by Alex Peters. Onside, Seth Griffith. What a poke check by DeCore. A chance for Ryan. He'll think twice. Derek Ryan for Seth Griffith, and now it comes back. Now to neutralize. Yeah, that uh, element of surprise for Joey DeCord on the poke check. As Griffith was in all alone. I actually thought he was offside, but the linesman said play on. I think this is icing, but no, it isn't. So I'll just yeah. not want to be a referee or linesman. Anymore. We're moving now, aren't we? <laughs> Always wanted to be Andy Van Helmen for Halloween. <laughs> Shot taken. <laughs> the court twice. Former longtime referee in the National yes. Hockey League. That was Broberg from a tough angle. Now comes out the center. Graham Skilleter, Reed Anderson, a young referee of the referees tonight. Out through center, Geeky over the line. Donskoy. Got to nope. shoot the puck there. Nima Linen broke it up. Adam he Larson tipped. <laughs> Broken up by Anmark. 2.37 left. And it comes back out. Let's go back to that play by Donskoy trying to go between the legs. Or whatever. Again, that's the second time he's had a chance to fire the puck. Right. And first one was the curl and drag, as you beautifully talked about, Johnny. And then this one here, he tries to go between the legs. And I think there comes a point there where you just got to tell the guy, look, the light is green. Right. Got to get it at. Doesn't matter. Up three, up, you know, two minutes left or whatever. Just get in that habit of firing that puck. And you're not going to go 50 games or 60, you know, without scoring a goal. Like, the right. more shots you get. The funny thing is, he's a veteran. He's done yeah, it. He's right. scored yeah. at this level. Schultz now. The guy's almost lights out in a shootout, too. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. again, just trying to be a little bit too fine or cute. But I would imagine Coach Hackstall and his staff would, you know, get the iPad out or, you know, guys get clips sent to them now. And just go, look. Two more shots. Yep. And it's one game. If you do that over 30 or 40 games, do the math. Whether you got an abacus or not, you just a better chance of putting the puck in the net. And let me ask both of you this. Is it because they don't realize they have the room? Is, is that the key? And it, 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 what goes uh, through the cycle? JT, I don't know what you think, but I think sometimes it's just some, you're trying to make life a little bit too difficult when it just looks so easy to make that 
right decision. Yeah, it's like trying to make the perfect play instead of just, you know, making the easier route. He could have also curled up and waited for a second wave. We've seen that with Edmonton hitting the second wave a few times. So it doesn't always have to be a shot just throwing it to the net for whatever, but you can possess the puck. Sometimes that in between the legs gets poke check and it's going the other way. At least when you curl up, you can protect the puck a little bit better. But in the Blaine's going to be gone. Oh, yeah, you never know. It's going to be like gridlock. It doesn't have to be a perfect shot. We saw Veneers had a perfect shot, but that's not how every goal goes in. There's funny bounces. We saw Decord had to be active earlier on a puck that just was thrown to the front of the net. Anything can happen when you shoot the puck. Don't mention gridlock again. Anyway, <laughs> past weekend was a dandy around here. I got here. your attention. <laughs> yeah, listen, the depths, that's where you want to be if you're a great Kraken fan. Sign up and get access to monthly sweepstakes, exclusive content, invitations to private events, live streams, and much more. Click the QR or go to NHL.com slash Kraken to sign up. Empty no, net. No goalie for Edmonton. Six out. Six skaters on the ice. Jay Woodcroft and his staff called their timeout and Glenn Gullickson, uh, yep. assistant coach, uh, had the dry erase board out and they look at he, you got to work on these type of plays. Now, obviously, when we know that the Kraken and the Oilers meet for real, we know who's going to be on the ice in this situation. But again, good opportunity for young players to work in and for the Kraken to be able to work in this situation trying to defend with the extra attacker. D-zone face-off win for Morgan Geeky. Good play by McCormick there to punch that puck out with his glove. 120 on the clock. Seppola and Rafferty getting an opportunity here late in the game. Yes. They have acquitted nicely tonight. Hamblin moves it along for Edmonton. Tyler Benson sends it back. Here's Broberg. He'll take it in. Philip Broberg will play it. Good sweep check by Rafferty. Comes back up top. Yamamoto going across now for Tyson Berry. Under a minute left. Preseason night number one. First of six. Berry with a shot off Rafferty. Denied by Decord. As it kicked around. Geeky protecting the puck to open space, but Kyler Yamamoto was there for Edmonton. A reset by the Oilers. Broberg off a stick, off Geeky, a stray. Barry pinches. Hunted down by Benson. 37 seconds left. His shot sealed off. A rebound given up by Decord. It comes back. Held in by Broberg. 30 seconds left. The Kraken Nation loves it. Broberg now for Tyler Benson. Out in front. Off Sepola. Still available. Who wants it? There's Schaefer. 19 seconds left. Kraken get it out. Sail it all the way down. It'll make it. This is icing. And with 13.6 on the clock, both of you can weigh in here. It's how you play, right, in the preseason. Results really don't matter. It's nice to win, but how did they play tonight? Well, I think it was a slow start, but I thought as the, as the first period went on, remember that flourish that they had where they got a lot of pucks and people to the net and just from up top JT just looked like the intensity picked up late in the first and carried over the rest of the way. Yeah it was definitely a slow start but there's a lot of penalties too so you got a good look at both sides of the special teams again you have to be happy with the way the team performed. Six seconds on the clock it goes to the outside make it three fought off by Decord well it's preseason but that's cracking hockey baby It's a 3-0 win over the Edmonton Oilers. Edzo, final comments. You don't give up any goals. But I thought the key was there weren't a lot of second and third chance opportunities for Joey Decord and Martin Jones. So that is a direct result of how the D played and the low forward played around the net. Good job there to build off his JT touchdown. JT, great job down there. Your thoughts? That horn is very loud. That is the first thought. Uh, no, I, you know, I look at the penalty kill and they did a great job on the penalty kill, not allowing too many seam plays. That was an issue right there where you had a lot of penalties within this game, but they did their job today, and that was one of the areas that Seattle needed to improve on, and they did right now today. Yeah, that five-minute uh, penalty, right. match penalty to Melanson, right? So, and then they scored to Shorty. The geeky goal, so plus one on a five-minute shorthanded situation ends up being, you know, the difference in the game, and that's because Edmonton did get two or three easy there. So, uh, a great first night, something to build off of, and expect to see some... Uh, 
familiar faces, but also some uh, some newer faces in the lineup. Probably a much different lineup for Dave Haxall tomorrow. Boys, a great job. You this, too, Johnny. This will be certainly a lot of fun. No question about it. Three nothing. The final. Back down we go. Here are Tom and Allison. All right, John. Thanks so much. First of all, I agree with JT. The horn is loud, <laughs> but I love it. That means the crack and a win, and they're celebrating good stuff. Hey, I got to say this before we get back into the game a little bit. A preseason game, and this felt like a regular season crowd. The crack and faithful, the fan base into it tonight. Showing up, supporting yeah. their team like they did all last year. I would expect no less. What were your takeaways tonight, Allison, overall in the 3 nothing win? Well, you know, we just heard the guys talk about the fact that this game doesn't go down in any record books, but there were so many good signs, both at an individual player level, some developing chemistry, and I really like JT's point, too, about getting some reps for these specialty teams and also two goaltenders who could really be in the conversation here as this season goes along. So, a lot of good ingredients as Dave Haxtell and his coaching staff start to find the right recipe for this team for the regular season. Now, one of the players we focused on tonight, I tell you, the more we see him, the more we like him, Matty Beneers. With more on his game this evening, let's get it over to Ross and Nick. Guys, he was rock solid. He was very much. He got good minutes in tonight. He got his goal. He got time on the power play as well. How would you assess Matty Benet's night? He did a lot of things extremely well. The face-off wins, dependable in his own zone. We saw a great back check earlier in the game as well. And look, I mean, this is a guy, he's going to be the future of the team. But I go back to what Allison said in the pregame show. Let's just give him his time, right? He's showing some really great signs. He's contributing in a lot of different ways. A great give and go that led to that early chance. Again, winning faceoffs. The strength will come, the timing will come, and then opportunities on the power play. Great pass from Oliver Bjorkstrand. A couple of opportunities on the man advantage for Matty Beneers, and then there's the back check coming all the way back hard through the middle of the ice and understanding that as a center iceman in the National Hockey League, it is a 200-foot game. And yeah, I mean, that's a snipe of all snipes right there that's a can of sardines right in the top of the net there and just a really really good shot for maddie veneers so look a lot of good things to build off of for a lot of different players but for me maddie veneers i think he's the star of the night starting on the top line with oliver bjorkstrand we'll have a look at a little bit of their chemistry and how they've been able to build that in a few minutes time but let's go down for some reaction to this 3-0 shutout win and here from the man playing his first cracking game in nine months brandon tanev with piper shaw Brandon, you've got one preseason game under your belt since coming back from injury. How did it feel getting back on your skates in a competitive environment? Yeah, it's been great. Obviously, it's uh, been a long time coming, so it's nice to be in front of the home, fa uh, home fans again. And obviously, the atmosphere was great, even though it's preseason. The, the fans here are unbelievable, so it was great to be out there. You're a key piece of that penalty kill unit. We were certainly missing you there last year. What allowed that unit to kill off that big five-minute major? Yeah, obviously, unfortunate situation, but at the end of the day, all the guys got it out. We got some big saves from our goaltender, some big blocks, and uh, we were able to communicate and make things easy on each other. Speaking of that kill, how did you find Morgan Geeky for that goal? Uh, I mean, uh, pass got through, for, uh, fortunately, and he made a great shot. So when you're able to contribute on the kill, it's great, but at the end of the day, it's just trying to get the job done. All right, thanks for the time, and congrats on a first win. Thank you. Brandon Tano back. They missed him. He is back already in mid-season form. Well, the Kraken win at Climate Pledge Arena means only one thing. The Salmon Tosses are back. Goal scorer Morgan Geeky with one of the honours tonight as the Kraken open pre-season with a 3-0 win over the Oilers.